Hello, everybody. Welcome back. For anybody who doesn't follow me on Instagram, why don't you follow me on Instagram? You may or may not have noticed that I had no new video for you last week. I'm sorry. The last couple weeks have been absolutely crazy, and leading up to the holidays, it's probably not going to get any better. So although I love doing these videos, it does take a little while to film them and edit them and yada yada yada. And I'm really interested in putting out something that's watchable and interesting and fresh. And if I'm trying to churn one out every week just because I promised that I would, I'm worried things will get a little bit stale. If they haven't already. So at least for now, leading up to the holidays and all of the insanity that comes with it, I'm going to move to an every two week schedule. Still on Mondays, but every second Monday. What's that old saying? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. So, you'll just really, really, really love me, I guess. I have 32 subscribers. Maybe we don't need to get too ahead of ourselves and how much everybody loves you. I'm nothing if not modest. It is once again an absolute snowpocalypse in the city where I live. Welcome to November in Alberta, I guess. So I spent the entire day today holed up in my house reading and reading that's that's basically what i did so i am energized and i am ready for a new cringe poetry this week this week's cringe poem is called frozen toes it's a winner as i walk downtown the rain pours with the oncoming storm a storm that came as a total surprise to me and my birkenstock sandals my feet grow cold with rainwater and mud as I trod down the pavement to a train I'm destined to miss. My toes are frozen. These Berkies aren't as waterproof as they once were. What a joke. And my hoodie sweater doesn't block the wind as well as it should. The sound of Corey Taylor grazes my eardrum as I stare into space on this beautiful, August morning. Tendrils of my black hair curl with the rain and stick to my glasses. A girl on the other end of the platform, a mass of hair and eyeshadow, stares at me from her blue contact lenses. I feel compelled to stick my tongue out at her. But instead, I retreat back to the solace of my rock music and frozen toes. For the record, I still own a pair of Birkenstock sandals. I also fail to check the weather report almost every day when I'm leaving the house, so I very often am wearing shoes that are totally inappropriate for the weather that we end up getting. Nice to know some things are constant in life. Okay, so where shall we start? These Birkies aren't as waterproof as they once were. Parentheses. What a joke. And my hoodie sweater doesn't block the wind as well as it should. Because when you're in high school and university, the one thing that you don't want to do is wear clothing that is appropriate for the weather. That is the mark of someone who is uncool. I mean, actually, you're very cool. Like, you're cold. Because it's obviously pouring rain outside and all you're wearing is a hoodie and Birkenstock sandals. So, you're very cool. I'm sorry. I yell at my husband when he makes terrible puns, and here I am doing it myself. I hope he doesn't watch this video or I'll never live it down. The sound of Corey Taylor grazes my eardrum. I know for a fact that I didn't regularly listen to Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor isn't normally just Corey Taylor. He's... he's in a band, right? He's, he's in a band. See, this is how uncool I am even now. But I had to make sure that I put that I was listening to Corey Taylor in this poem so everybody knew how cool I was. I'm pretty sure the song that I was listening to by Corey Taylor was from the Spider-Man soundtrack. Which, if you're keeping score, also included Chad Kroger of Nickelback. So it really ran the gamut there. And there was nothing cool about any of it. Tendrils of my black hair curl with the rain. This is true. I did have black hair for quite a while and I loved my black hair and it made me feel edgy and really cool. A girl on the other end of the platform, a mass of hair and eyeshadow, judgy, stares at me from behind her blue contact lenses. I feel compelled to stick my tongue out at her. I know what you're thinking. And yes, 
I was an anarchist. Just kidding. I absolutely was not an anarchist. Probably didn't need to clarify that I wasn't an anarchist. I'm not sure that sticking your tongue out at strangers is high on the list of things that make you an anarchist. But judging this girl I didn't know and wanting to stick my tongue out at her definitely made me feel badass. My hoodie. Soaking wet in my hoodie. It probably looked like a drowned rat. So the narrative is that I don't stick my tongue out at this complete stranger on the train platform. Instead, I retreat back into the solace of my rock music and frozen toes. Like only parents and grandparents call it rock music. Oh, they're listening to the rock music again. An 18 year old doesn't refer to what she listens to as rock music. I listen to rock music and stick my tongue out at strangers. Also, I have black hair. Edgy. I'm sure my parents are likely very grateful that the peak of my rebellion, for the most part, was me refusing to wear appropriate footwear and wanting to stick my tongue out at strangers. I mean, I could have been doing a lot worse. I was actually quite lame. Still am. Moving on. I just finished reading Margaret Atwood's newest book, The Testaments. Margaret Atwood is one of my favorite all-time authors, and I literally devoured the book in a day. So because I've got Margaret on the brain, today's poem is a Margaret Atwood poem from another university anthology. This one isn't a Norton anthology. It's like, I don't know, it's maybe like a no-name version. Just these two people. Kennedy and, I'm gonna slaughter that. Gioia? Gioia? I don't know. Anyway, it's an anthology of poetry. Today, I'm going to read you Siren Song by Margaret Atwood. This is the one song everyone would like to learn. The song that is irresistible. The song that forces men to leap overboard in squadrons, even though they see the beached skulls. The song nobody knows because anyone who has heard it is dead, and the others can't remember. Shall I tell you the secret? And if I do, will you get me out of this bird suit? I don't enjoy it here. Squatting on this island looking picturesque and mythical with these two feathery maniacs. I don't enjoy singing this trio, fatal and valuable. I will tell the secret to you, to you, only to you. Come closer. This song is a cry for help. Help me. Only you, only you can. You are unique. At last. Alas, it is a boring song, but it works every time. Ooh, I like that one, <laughs> it's so saucy. So for anyone who isn't familiar with Greek mythology, as I am not, this beautiful no-name anthology comes with a little footnote that says, in Greek mythology, sirens were half woman, half bird nymphs who lured sailors to their deaths by singing hypnotically beautiful songs. I knew most of that. It was the half woman, half bird thing I didn't get. I think in my head, sirens were like a mermaid. So more of like a half woman, half fish than half woman, half bird. But it makes the line, I don't enjoy it here squatting on this island looking picturesque and mythical with these two feathery maniacs. Makes a little more sense. <laughs> when you realize she was half woman, half bird. I enjoyed that one, that was a fun one. It's interesting, although Margaret Atwood is probably one of my favorite authors of all time, I actually don't think I've read hardly any of her poetry. Well, then you can't really call yourself a fan, can you? Sure, maybe not. I like Margaret Atwood. I haven't read a lot of her poetry, but I will endeavor to change that ASAP. What's this? Why, why did I do finger guns? Things are devolving quickly, my friends. But at least I didn't sing this episode. You know, you got a pun and some finger guns, but there was no singing. So we'll get there. We'll get, it's, it's a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Thank you so much everybody for your patience as I work to this once every two week schedule. We'll see what the new year has to bring. For now, I'm more interested in putting out some decent, note I didn't say great, 
or even good content versus trying to churn something out just because it's time to churn something out. Although in the interest of full disclosure and transparency, filming every two weeks does not mean that I'm going to prepare. I'm still going to literally sit down to film, flip through my book, decide which two poems I want to read, and then just wing it because that's how I do. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, you know all the various options available to you. There's subscribe buttons, bells to ring, thumbs to thumb. Oh my god. And as always and forever, thank you so much everybody for watching. Bye.